thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you, Virginie and Frank Weiss for inviting me uh, for this conference. I'm really grateful to all of you and Diascom as well. So uh, my talk focuses on the petitions of women indentured laborers from India to the sugar colonies of European empires across the globe during the 19th and early 20th century. I like it. The history of coolie women or women girmitias reaches us either through official reports or observers' accounts. In both cases, the transcribers of testimonies or the interpreters of responses would have been distanced from the migrant situation. Yet, where recruits were allowed to express in their own idiom, the results are extraordinarily revealing and the complexities of experiences are apparent. This talk explores the everyday life of indentured women on the sugar plantations across the globe through their petitions and argues that Although the plantation regime gave a free patriarchal life considerably to coolie women, the male indentured workers tried to enforce the patriarchal norms on them. Historians and scholars have associated indentured experience with the slave diaspora. It has been stereotyped as involving a higher degree of coercion in recruitment and consequently inferior knowledge of receiving colonies, a much greater emphasis emphasis on the single male migration as opposed to families, harsher working conditions and uh, working and living conditions in the colonies, low wages, practice of harsh and ju judicial and physical methods of disciplining workers, and therefore a more limited means of achieving mobility and establishment of family and keen bath settlements. <clears throat> A huge tinker has forcefully articulated such disadvantaged role of Indian migrants within the empire. Historians and scholars have been influenced by the dis this dis uh, depiction of indenture as a neo-slave migration to argue that conditions of transportation and transplantations were essentially coercive. Some subsequent studies have pointed out that although indentured immigrants had opportunity to return home of their birthplace, the period in which their contract was valid legally confined them to certain plantations. This was that after the end of the contract, laborers return home in large number, that is 30% of migrants, as Satendra also mentioned that one third migrated, uh, returned back. Some of the studies have explored into the socio-cultural aspect of indenture immigration. This scholarship, even fiction, fiction has much more to say on the demise of caste, both abroad the ship and in the plantation and on the public festivals. Very recently, Goetra Bahadur in her famous book, Kuli Women, <clears throat> which Professor Judith also mentioned, has reopened the debate on the treatment of women on plantations. In contrast to earlier writings, Bahadur considers that the phenomena of migration enabled the empowerment of women through their new identity. However, these studies are based on either official reports or observer's accounts, and hence these are less representative of actual migrant situation. Hence, this paper explores the everyday life of indentured women on the sugar plantation across the globe through their petitions, letters, and letters, and argues that, Number one, the indentured women were not only harassed or sexually abused by English or white managers, but also by Indian male males. The critics of Indian nationalists such as Gandhi, Gokhale and Malviya against the indenture system was that it was demeaning the status of India or Indian morality as white overseers planters assaulted Indian women on the overseas plantation. So uh, against this uh, uh, notion, I, I argue that the, the women were not only harassed by white, uh, white overseers, managers or sardars, uh, by Indians as well. And the second is that although the plantation regime gave a patriarchy free life to Indian Kuli women, the male indenture workers tried to enforce the patriarchal norms, socio-cultural norms on them. Now looking to the women under the indenture, a significant number of women shipped out along with men under the indenture contract. In the initial years, women's proportion was, although less as planters, 
agents were not interested in recruiting large number of women because they believed that women on plantations are not much productive <clears throat> however due to a large number of murders and crime on the sugar plantations colonial government and plantation officials found a paucity of women as a reason for it and hence in 1864 it was made essential by law to carry 40 women for every 100 men to the plantation colonies in the moving out of the overseas colonies these there was a myth that women of lower caste and loose characters participated in the journey conversely as historian brizlal has shown through his data analysis the indentured women laborers belong to all caste and social background dominant historiography has been con continuously highlighting that the women were forcefully fraudulently and many a time by kidnapping shipped out to the colonies however as evident evidence suggest most of the women left their home due to the long history of suppression under the patriarchal social structure barbaric treatment of widows by their kith and kins caste operations and bearing of inter caste love and marriages were some of the searching cause causes of escaping women from their homes and becoming the girmitias the coolie life for indian women was not so easy although the plantation regime gave them equal status as to their male counterparts but women had to face many odds plantation managers and indian males both kept their evil eyes on them walter gill's description of a hindu women coolie show shows how plantation managers looked to indentured women walter gill was a uh, planter in fiji and he wrote a book called turn the north east at tonstone uh, so he published this book in 1917 it was a description of his uh, managership on a fijian plantation and he writes i quote the hindu was different tantalizing beautiful she was a brittle as crystal with some men and virgin kind of to others a small and dainty she was a satsuma quote and quote satsuma in a silk sari and as jealously amoral as a doe rabbit she looked her lovers as a ship takes raw seas surging up to the one who would smooth her her then tossing him aside thirsting for the next in a strong cruel light of the tropics the elfin promise of her said stop me and buy one he again describes a small perfectly proportioned girl girl women lithe like a dancer her long black hair when she let you glimpse it beneath her sari was breast length she had the thin high neck cheek bone face of classical hindu beauty a fine nose and deep brown eyes their lids and surroundings flesh shaded with natural pigment talk with her and she was in turn impish virginal subdued provocative even the white women jealous critical about anything oriental raved over her beauty that is by coat clothes that is by walter gill not only the plantation or government officials but indians as well as well as the sympathize sympathizers of indian workers too shared a stereotype about the women c f andrews the best friend of gandhi wrote in his report on indians in fiji i quote c f andrews the indian women in this country is like a rudderless vessel with its mast broken drifting on to the rocks or like a canoe being wheeled down the rapids of a great river without any controlling hand she passes from one man to another and has lost even the sense of shame in doing so coat clothes such perceptions about the indenture of indian women made them an easy target of malicious gossips and inundus it gave it gave sardars and overseers the license to treat the women with very little respect and viewed them merely as sexual objects in such circumstances women had only hope in the protector of emigrants or colonial secretaries 
or in the court for their grievances. Petitions and court depositions allowed Indian women to express their grievances. Since most of the indentured women were illiterate, the governors of the colonies recognized the need for the appointment of in interpreters, translators, or petition writers. Hence, one interpreter was allowed per court in the colonies who was supposed to be the perfect master of Indian languages such as of Tamil, Telugu, Hindustani, and Nagri dialect. Apart from them, some literate Indian workers also jumped in writing petitions of their fellow workers. <clears throat> the fellow workers. For instance, Baba Ram Chan uh, <clears throat> was one amongst the literate workers who wrote many petitions and letters on behalf of indentured workers in Fiji. Those indentured Indians who were in jail for various regions, they took help from Indian police officers who were working there. As Marina Carter has expressed, for Indians who could not afford the expense of drawing up a petition, the most direct means of being heard was the magistrate's court as either a complainant or defendant. The petition and depositions were, as John Kelly explains, were the one documentary source in which the instruction of the white overseers in the sexual and the social lives of indentured laborers is repeatedly and provocatively discussed. Almost always by the Indian defendant and their witness. Now looking to the petition of indentured women, whenever any discrepancy was felt by women, she chose to write a petition either to the protector of immigrants or to the colonial secretary or went directly to court for the justice. In the most of the petitions by indentured women, there is sense of exploitation sexually, physically, mentally or otherwise by Indian males or white overseers. For instance, the petition of Minachi Amal, a re-indenture women to a A.J. Harvey of Veralam Plantation in South Africa. She stated in her petition, I quote the petition, I quote, about four weeks ago, my husband Vera Sarazu assaulted me, not registered marriage. Someone on the estate told him that I was going to live with Telaya Sami as his wife. I went to court and complained about it and was given a letter back to my employer. Last Monday, the Sardar Muna Sami Govindan knocked me at breakfast time and instigation of my at the instigation of my husband Verashara Julu. Yesterday Muna Sami, a fellow servant, knocked me about in the barracks at about 5:30 p.m. I reported this to my little master and he said that you must have been given cause to be knocked about. I don't want to live with my husband and pray that I may be transferred elsewhere or allowed to remain single without being interfered by the Indian on the estate, Indian quote and quote, quote close. Minachi was assaulted by her in living partner on a assumption that she will move to live with another man as his wife and hence her living partner, Sardar and his servant all clubbed together and assaulted her at many occasions. Minachi petition shows that how women single or married or living were constantly being harassed by male, either Indian or white on the plantations. Coolie women was either denied her agency or was treated as sexual objects. Indentured women were not only assaulted by assaulted, but cheated as well on the plantations. The petition of Man Kumari, an indentured woman in the plantation of Fiji, who was sent to jail on a false statement given by her on the advice of an Indian policeman in Suwa, she wrote to the colonial secretary a petition regarding her false imprisonment in case of a murder by her husband. She wrote, the petition is in Hindi. Actually, most of these petitions are in uh, uh, Nagri, uh, you know, uh, 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 manuscript. So uh, uh, I am using the translation of these uh, petitions because uh, I don't know if somebody will understand Bhojpuri or Hindi. For instance, this letter is written in a uh, like 
चिट्ठी लिखा मन कुमारी औरत छोटा लाट साहब कह हमारा सलाम पहुंचे सो द ट्रांसलेशन इज दैट द लेटर इज रिटर्न बाई मन कुमारी फीमेल टू द ऑनरेबल कॉलोनियल सेक्रेटरी दैट इज कॉल्ड लाल्ट साहब सलाम सर आई राइट यू दैट आई वॉज नॉट गिल्टी आई स्पोक अकॉर्डिंग अकॉर्डिंग Accordingly, as Ram Rekha instructed me, Ram Rekha, the policeman said to me, "If you say what I tell you to say, to say nothing will happen to you, sir. I am an ignorant, ignorant woman. I am ignorant of the ways in the Fiji. This is transliteration. Exactly, I have you know uh, translated what she has said. So, for the life of one man, one man was hanged, and I have been sentenced to twenty years." which is more than i can support sir prays earnestly for either to be released or hanged the sarkar is my mali my parent the sarkar is my father and mother now uh, put close mankwari was in jail since 1897 and after 6 years she took the help of a, of mahavir an indian policeman in the jail to write her petition to the colonial secretary of fiji some of the complaints are collected by indentured women dealt with the failure of employers to meet a specific contractual obligations overtasking and insufficient pay were common cause of the complaint the complaint of mathia and rasulan are some of the examples mathia was mathia was indentured to donning of rosetta and her complaint stated as follow that is in natal I came to complain that I made to work from half past five in the morning till half past five in the evening. I am not allowed any time for meals at all. I have a child about three months old, and I am not given time for look after it. I am made to carry potato boxes, which work, which work is very hard for me. I am continually being harassed by my master. i do not wish to work as i am weak from illness rasulan could close rasulan was reindentured to speak and johnson in her complaint to protector of emigrants she stated as follow follow i quote that i work in mr respect's house as a house servant i have been working on and off for about 10 months owing to a certain disease in my stomach i have not been paid wages properly for the time i work during each month one month my master pay me 5 rupees and other time nothing at all during the whole of the last month i did not work owing to the pain in my stomach i have been under treatment i got my medicine from the hospital now i am now asked to come to work and i am unable to do any work i pray sir that my contract may be cancelled most of the complaints of the petitions filed by indentured women dealt with the humiliating and painful physical chastisement they had suffered many a time planters managers were forcing women for extra marital leaving this scarcity made the conditions of women so vulnerable on the plantations the petition of lakshmi and in an indentured to koninger koningmer plantation in south, south africa in her petition lakshmi stated that i came to come i quote i came to complain that i am continually assaulted and ill treated by my, my master i work in house while my husband work in the mill which is about 2 miles from my home a calcutta indian named sidhu who work works in the kitchen is always asking me to leave my husband and became his wife when i complain to my master he also tells me to leave my husband and live with sidhu one occasion sidhu got my master to lock up in the bathroom and assault me because i will not agree to become his wife my mistress does not want me to go home to my husband at night but wants me to stay in the kitchen i do not want to stay in kitchens as i am afraid of sidhu i wish to be transferred together with my husband to someone else i will on no account go back to the same master for close the puti puti indenture women to chick omengi plantation stated in her complaint as as follow last month manager mr 
Lefort told me that my husband was weak and unable to produce child and asked me to cohabit with him. I complained this to my husband and he went and asked the manager for an explanation. Because my husband asked him for explanation, he took all our things out of the room and put us out. He said this, is, said this to me in the office when I went to get medicine. No one was present and he did not molest me. In both of the complaints, Indian men and managers jointly molested. Since there was no family set up in plantations, as all indentured immigrants were new to a distant place, such molestation was easy for men, either Indian or white. Sometimes women also exploited their scarcity values by cohabiting with, sorry, cohabiting with more men and getting benefits of less work or jewelry. Murai complaint shows that he st she stayed with a man because he gave her jewelry. She stated that, I quote, that after my husband dies, I live with Tulsi. During the time I lived with him, he gave me a pair of ankles, silver ankles, and one nose gold ring and other jewelries. I have one other by my late husband. The jewelries are nowhere near the value mentioned by Tulsi. When I left, I told him that I wish to return to India and he bought me a railway ticket to Durban and gave me four shillings in cash and told me to attend a feast on my way down. I gave him all my earnings during the time I lived with him. I have no money, uh, no money on me except the jewelry. I do not wish to return to the state. Plantation court close. Plantation regime did not recognize the traditional marriages and hence in danger, laborers had to register their marriages. This gave the freedom to laborers to choose their partners across the caste and religious line. Totaram Sanadya, an indentured laborer in Fiji has described it as a indiscriminate system of marriage. He used the term Andhadhund Paddhati system. Andhadhund Paddhati, that's an Indian Hindi name. In many cases, however, the indentured system itself was cause of the social dis disruption and breakdown of family relationship. Ratnang case testifies this. Ratnang went to jail in a case for four years and he found on his return that his wife has gone with another man. He wrote a petition to, to the protector to get her wife back. G back. His petition was as follow. I quote the petition. Can Sir, you... the signed Ratnang, five minutes? Yeah, less than five minutes, yeah. So just, or three minutes, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So I'll quickly move. The difficulties experienced by the men in controlling women as it was against their socio-cultural norms back home led to the force, the colonial government to make some rules to control uh, women. If you look to the petition of Ram Bharos Maharaj and Tota Ram, Baba Ram Chandra, they wrote a petition to colonial government to, to make a rule uh, uh, which can be enforceable to the women who were trying to, you know, get married with the other men. So this uh, petition shows that this petition is to Her Ex Excellency is concerning the cause leading to a great number of hanging in Fiji. We think that it is on the account of women. A woman lives with a man for five to ten years, receiving jewelry, etc., deserted him and goes to live with another man. We shall be grateful if, it's excellent, if your excellency will bring before a legislative council some suitable law to put a stop to such practice and compel a woman to live with one man. When a man who has been des deserted by his woman attempts to get his jewelry back from her, he is sent to gold. So they wrote this petition and in the reply, see how uh, what colonial government said that, in reply to your petition dated 25th of the November addressed to His Excellency, the governor, I am directed to inform you that a law was passed at the last sitting of the Legislative Council with a view to putting a stop to one frequent cause of the trouble, that is the trafficking in women for profit. And it is hoped that it will have beneficial effect. This reply clearly shows that the colonial government through law given Indian men the means to control their wives to return to them 
irrespective of the attendant circumstances. However, the legal spouses of the wayward's males could also claim their dues. So there are many other letters and petitions which show such thing. Now I'll quickly move to the conclusion. So now one can conclude that the petition and letters of indentured women are very rare set of documents, which has not yet been used by the historians, uh, historians to write history of indentureship. Due to the nature of the material, it offers insight into the indenture experience, which seem much more different from the slave diaspora, with which indenture has more commonly been associated by the historians. The petition of indentured women depicts that although women we are enjoying their equal rights to men, but she was constantly being harassed by the Indians and white men. Colonial government through law restricted the established patriarchal norms in which men got rights to control women. Thank you very much. <laughs>